This is Jay Addison from Crypto Biz Magazine. We're live in Las Vegas at the Inside Bitcoins Convention, and we're here with Perry Ann Boring, the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Perry Ann, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great too. Thanks. Do you think it's possible to properly regulate Bitcoin in its current form? Well, Bitcoin is already being regulated. There's about 10 federal agencies that have jurisdiction over digital currencies that we're working with. And then also, all states have uh, different jurisdictions over the industry as well. It's very difficult to regulate such a nascent industry because it's so new. With Bitcoin only being five years old, there's really uh, not a lot of precedent set in the legal world for its industry, which we're starting to see now. We're seeing it with the Department of Justice and the SEC, the FTC. All these agencies have brought cases against different Bitcoin companies. Uh, so that's why it's extremely important to work with regulators to um, educate them on what this is to make sure that these uh, new innovative technologies are being regulated in a way that's fair to them, in a way that doesn't hinder the technology. What would an ideal set of Bitcoin regulations look like to you? I think there's already plenty of regulation out there. What's most important is working with the companies that operate in this space, making sure they understand where regulation is uh, would apply to their companies. Uh, we just saw last week the director of FinCEN did an interview with Coindesk where she said it was unfortunate that there's exchanges that think that they're operating under the radar. And some are thinking that this is going to foreshadow some enforcement action uh, because they said that if these companies think that they uh, won't start putting in compliance programs until enforcement happens, they're willing to do that. Uh, and it would be extremely unfortunate to see some of these companies brought down because they didn't understand where the law applied to them. Yeah, that makes sense. When the NDFS regulations finalize, how close do you think it'll look to the first public draft? We have several initiatives where we're working directly with the Department of Financial Services uh, to bring substantial changes to the proposed bit license rules and regulations in its current form. They would be very hindering to small businesses and startups. And so uh, we petitioned uh, the department to extend the comment period, which they did. Uh, we're also going to uh, um, engage with Superintendent Ben Lonsky on October 14th at Cardozo Law School and we are putting forward uh, different proposals of what we think state licensing should look like and we will be applying a lot of pressure uh, to the department to make changes that will not hinder innovation but will set up guardrails and we also want to make sure that Superintendent Ben Lonsky uh, does exactly what he keeps saying he's going to do which is set up guardrails but not hinder innovation, which unfortunately is not what we saw in the first proposal, but we do believe uh, through working with him uh, and the industry together, we can uh, make sure that both uh, the industry and the department's goals are met. Bitcoin evolves and moves extremely fast. Can regulation ever keep up with the innovation? That's not traditionally how regulation is formed. Regulation always follows innovation, and it's always when bad actors are abusing technology. So anytime that value is being transferred in the financial services industry, it's very susceptible to hackers. Uh, and that's when if companies don't have appropriate compliance programs set up so their company or their technology or their platforms are not being abused by bad actors, that's when we start seeing regulation comes in. So this goes back to my comment I said earlier that our efforts with the Chamber of Digital Commerce are working with the industry as well to making sure that they understand what laws abide to their company so we can preempt for further regulation. When you speak with the policymakers about Bitcoin, what kind of understanding of the technology do they generally start with? Do you find yourself having to explain a lot of details? We speak with a lot of uh, public policymakers, regulators and legislatures and we come in contact with people from all sides of the spectrum. Uh, we held the first ever Bitcoin Education Day on Capitol Hill just a few weeks ago where we brought in about 30 different people within the Bitcoin ecosystem and we briefed over 70 offices in the House of Representatives. And the comments that we're getting are uh, range from People were extremely skeptical because they had heard of some of the scandals, including Mt. Gox and Silk Road, all the way on the other side of the spectrum of we met people that were mining Bitcoin that worked for the wow. government. So um, it's very interesting uh, to see how 
through uh, this innovative technology, how it's really spreading. It's a, it's a peer to peer technology and it's reaching people in very interesting ways, even in government. Uh, people on Capitol Hill, it's a lot of younger, uh, younger people that work there and this technology is very much catching the attention of the younger generation. So it is extremely encouraging that mm -hmm. a lot of the staff members, uh, members of Congress, are finding out about it through social media or through uh, different outlets and, and some of them actually have first-hand experience with the technology, which is very encouraging That's and for sure. will, will, will definitely help with the education pushes that we're yeah, doing. Yeah, you bet, eh? Why is it important to have an industry trade association? So the industry has just matured this year to a point where it has formed formal representation in Washington, D.C. Uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce was the very first trade association located and launched in Washington, D.C. And it's important that we have formal representation because government is getting very, very interested in this technology. We are almost every single day working with the 10 different agencies or departments in the federal government, they all have working groups and are all looking into digital currencies and it's very important that they have accurate and reliable information uh, especially because Bitcoin is open source and no one owns it there's no Bitcoin headquarters if the Department of Justice has a question on Bitcoin who do they turn to there's not a Bitcoin headquarter so as someone that used to work for a member of Congress um, I worked in the financial services industry um, on the government side we often relied on trade association for reliable third-party non-biased information. Uh, it's different with when a company, an individual company comes in to meet with the government is because they have a bias. But when you have a trade association, it provides that degree of separation between the um, between the, the company and the government. And we represent the industry as a whole. And we have a, a very loud, a very credible, and the authoritative voice for digital currencies in Washington. It sounds like you guys are doing some really great stuff. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. So one question. January 2015, January 1st, what do you think the price of Bitcoin is going to be? This is a trick question we ask everybody. Oh, I hate to speculate on price, because what if it... <laughs> it's all over the range. So you'll fit in with any price. Well, I'll, I'm not going to put a price point out, but what I will say is that today the market capitalization is hovering around $4 billion. And uh, for the industry to be taken serious, it needs to put serious resources yes. into Washington. So if we even put one one thousandth of the resources of the amount of, of the market cap where we are today, we can help grow the industry into the trillion dollar range. And one of our goals of the Chamber of Digital Commerce is to grow this to a trillion dollar industry by 2020. And we will help provide those resources by working with regulators to provide the regulatory structure to allow this industry to thrive. A special thanks to Perian Boring, the founder of the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. This is Jay Addison from Crypto Biz Magazine, live from Meckler Media's Inside Bitcoins Conference in Las Vegas. Remember to subscribe to Crypto Biz Magazine at CryptoBizMag.com. Follow us on Twitter at CryptoBizMag. Thanks for joining us and learn more at CryptoBizMagazine.com.